Let's get going on our images. I've been talking about that for a little while and then I disappeared for a couple days. So we are currently, we've got a list as you can see, and we created a profile screen that let us sign out. Uh, what I'm looking to do is put an image uh, up on top of this, but what we did need to do is start in Xano and we need to build out the database to hold and reference the media, uh, the image, profile image in this case, and then we need to build the API to upload it and put it into that table. And then we'll create an association for an image into the user. So that's gonna be the process for this video. So let's go ahead and start by adding a media table. Xano does a really good job of handling images, uh, uploading video and attachments like PDFs as well. But we're gonna just focus on images for now. So we've got the media table. We're gonna add a column to it. We are gonna add a storage column and it's gonna be for image metadata. And we're gonna call it image. And so for now, all we're gonna have is the image reference here. I'm gonna start with some of the basics before we get into the API. Um, Xano makes it easy. If you notice when I click on the new row, I have the ability to upload an image directly into the database. So it's a good way to test that my upload just into the table is working and get me familiar with the capabilities. And then you'll notice it pops up a little thumbnail size so that you can see what you've done. You've got the ability to delete that reference. And then if we click on the column header, um, we also have the option to do a bulk upload. So if you wanted to upload you know, a dozen, 200 images, you could do the bulk upload and click on all those images and it would go through and load up each one of the images into your table. We're not gonna do that at this point because we really don't have a need for it. What we're looking to do is, I should probably reference, make it possible so that from your profile screen, you have the ability to upload your own profile image um, and then make changes to it later if you want to. So that's what we're leading up to with all of these activities. Um, I already have, we go look, I've, I've got a database now that can hold images. Um, I have APIs now that are the media table APIs. This allows me to retrieve all of my metadata for anything that's been uploaded. And actually, if I do a get, why don't we, since we uploaded an image, we can go ahead and do run and debug on the media get all records and just run that. And what you see here is what is stored in that table. The actual image itself is stored, I believe it's out on S3 um, in the uh, world of Xano. And you can see our ID, uh, the Unix timestamp, the path, which is in addition to your base URL for your Xano instance, and then the name of the file and that it's an image and the size and the type and then width and height. So this is all the metadata that's stored uh, in that column, that uh, the image column. So it's just a JSON structure that's stored in there that's returned to you when you get all the items back. Okay, so now that we kind of have a view of that, I'm also gonna want to make it possible to do an upload into that table from an API. So what I've done in the past is upload image. And we'll do that as a post because we're changing the content of the database for uploading an image. And I guess I can have authentication there because we've added that to our mobile app as well uh, a few videos ago. Okay, so now I have the beginnings of an upload image API. I haven't done these many times. I've got them working, definitely, but I may end up referencing one of my other apps uh, occasionally if I forget exactly where I'm heading. 
But the first first thing we need to do is reference the information that's being passed up to the API. And in this case, uh, we're passing a file. And so uh, in my inputs, I'm doing an add, scrolling down to the bottom, in storage, I'm gonna pick the file type, and I'm just gonna call that content. So what you've got here is the input, and in our case, we're gonna pass in a base64 encoded image file. That's something that AppGyver supports, so any of the images you have on your mobile phone, and we'll see this once we're done with this section, probably in the next video or two, but you've got the ability to upload um, an image file, not as binary, but as uh, base64 encoded. Base64 encoded just means you take the binary data and turn everything into a character uh, so that it can be passed without concerns of binary special characters and such. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is for my function stack, I need to create a variable. So into data manipulation and actually, I think I'm already taking you down the wrong path there. What I do need to do is content upload, not data manipulation, because we're uploading an image. So I want to be able to create the image metadata. And you'll see here, let's, see, let's just call it image. And the value that's going to get passed in is my input value of content. So I'm creating as you see, when I pick the content upload option and the image metadata from that, I now have a function stack called create image from file. So the file is what's getting passed in. And I'm creating an image variable based on that file. And so the next thing that I want to do is actually add that to add that record to my media table. Okay. So created at defaults to now, which is great. And then the image, which is an object, I need to find the variable that I just created called image. And we'll save that. And actually I should show you that the output is what we saw before when I ran the get API. I'm getting the same information. And let's call this image upload. So I'm creating a record and I'm putting it into the image upload uh, variable. And then I will go ahead and pick that as the response file. So pick variable image upload. Okay. So how about we go about and test this? We're going to start with coming back to media. I'm going to delete the one I have here for now, just so we've got an empty table. And then we will go into upload. <clears throat> and actually, uh, to show you how I do testing with this, as opposed to trying to run and debug and paste a very large base64 encoded image in these quotes, I found myself a nice little website, um, shunia.github.io slash 1x1. So you can see the URL up here. Um, I'd recommend using it. It makes it very easy to create a one pixel base64 encoded uh, image. And you know the color you can pick and choose however you want. Um, down here at Picker, uh, if you want something that's a little brighter, you can go with the green. And then the nice part is, even though this is a base64 encoded, what I'm going to show you is that this data URL is actually the format that the API expects to see. So I'm going to click on the data URL and copy that. And this will be a full one pixel image, which means now that I have this copied, I can place that right in between the quotes. I'll just paste it. And you can see a one pixel image, base64 encoded, is very manageable size-wise. So my content, which is this file style, and then this is an industry standard, internet standard format. Right here is really the equivalent to the header. 
So I'm saying I'm passing you data. The data is of a type image. The image is um, going to be saved as a PNG. And then a semicolon, it's coming up as a base 64. And then the comma. And everything after that comma is the base 64 encoded image. So if I run this, oh, and actually, you know what I need to do? I'm going to put on pause because since I've secured it, I need to grab a quick auth token. So I'm going to pause so you don't have to wait on that and then come right back with it and continue. Okay, so now we have the auth token from my login. If I run this, we should see that we get a successful return and I have an invalid auth token. Isn't that a bummer? Oh, I wonder if, let's try that. See if I'm a little better off. Nope. I am not. Um, see what I'm doing wrong here. I had done my login. Okay, we pause you once again. Okay, we're back again. I'm going to go ahead and open a ticket on that one. I'm not sure if it's broken or not, but it looks like it's just a Xano debug level problem, not being able to add the authorization token that was up here before. Um, it was failing on validation of that token. So what I did for the sake of this video was I made this a public endpoint. I took the authorization off of it. The authorization section is out here. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and add back in the base64 encoded header and then the base64 encoded image as part of the run and debug of the upload image. API that we just created. And when I run this, you'll see that we get a successful call back or return data. This is the metadata we looked at before for the image we uploaded earlier, but now we have a new one pixel lime green image we've uploaded. As you can see, the width is one, the height is one. So we're going to go look at the database just to see if our API worked for us. And there it is. There is our one pixel lime green image that we've uploaded. So at this point, we have a functioning API to upload any base64 encoded image. I'm going to do one more thing while we're here. I'm going to go into the user. We're going to add a new column to the user. It's going to be a table reference. It's going to be media. And then what we're going to end up doing for our users as we get into AppGyver is we're going to end up uploading an image from AppGyver, which will go into the media table. And in the same function stack of an API, we will place the um, ID number of that image here so that we have a reference. And just to show you what that will look like, I believe my, we're going to make both of these three because if I go back to media, I have image three here. And so what I've done is for my user, I now have a reference to that ID as the media ID. And so just to show you what we can accomplish with Xano, we are going to go to the user. And for getting, um, let's say, let's do it for getting all users. When we query the record to get all users, we're not creating any, um, any filtering, any joins. But what we are going to do is use the add-on capability. And this actually ends up being very powerful, especially when you have the table of references. Um, I can go in, and this would be my normal output. But I'm going to see how to create a new add-on. So I'm going to say that I want a new add-on from the media. It's going to be a single item. Even though I'm getting a list of users, this add-on is specific to each user being returned. So I only want a single item based on media ID, no sorting necessary. And this is going to be 
profile image. I'm going to, it's just, just to make it obvious, user profile image. So now what I get is um, all of the, so I'm going to add in all of the user profile image metadata. But what I want to do here is that any ID, dun, 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 let's take a look. User, the media, okay, so we're good. So the ID that we're going to match on is the media ID integer. At least I think I have that right. Let's find out. So this is what your output looks like now that you've created the add-on. So let's save that and let's run it. Oh, my whole auth token issue again. Well, you get to see me undo this a little bit. So I go into my settings, I'm gonna get rid of the authorization on that for the moment, and I'm gonna get everything. There we go. So now what you see happening is in this separate little section that I named user profile image, my original Git user API to get a list of user APIs automatically includes the um, table reference we created to the media table from each individual uh, user. And what we, what we will end up using in AppGyver is this path. So this will be how we reference the image in the AppGyver mobile app. Uh, once we get to once we get to that part of it, so let me close that out. And while I'm thinking about it, we are going to go to the user, and when we get a specific ID, we actually um, want to do the same thing, which is in our output for the getting the record. We want to do an add-on, and what you find out here that is very helpful in Xano is once I've created the user profile image add-on. I can just reselect it and let me get make sure I got all the there we go media ID done saved okay so I want to test this as well to make sure that I have it right but since I don't remember what my user IDs are I'm switching back to the database view and we're going to do it for 26. Okay, so I'm gonna go back down to user and do, 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 get, where is that? There we go, get user ID. Make sure that I have everything saved, I do. And so I'm gonna do a run and debug. And we'll turn off our off again until I figure out that prior problem. Because it's really not relevant to what we're doing. I will put in 26 and run this. And there we go. So now if I get an individual user or if I get a list of users, I will also get in return all of the image information. So I think we're good. At this point, we've set up the basics of um, what we need for getting APIs in AppGyver. As I get into AppGyver in the next video, I know we're going to need to make some more changes in Xano, but uh, we should be good for now. Thanks for your time. See you on the next one.